The first evaluator is going to be John Morse evaluating Stefan Villa Vicencio speech. So let me turn over control of the meeting to John Morse so he could complete his evaluation. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Wesley. And thank you, Stefan Villa Vicencio. This tonight, I have heard you give maybe a half a dozen speeches. And I think tonight you delivered the best speech you have given so far. It was good in many, many respects. First of all, you were dressed for success tonight. You had a shirt and tie, you were ready, you were prepared. You knew the material well, and you, pardon me, you delivered it with confidence. The most confidence that I have seen from you at any time or any other speech that you have given. Wonderful job. Wisdom from Uncle Teddy. That was the title of your speech, and you advised us in the introduction that you gave to the Toastmaster that this was about how Teddy taught you inner peace and introduced you to the poem Desirata. And tonight you delivered your speech by first telling us about your Uncle Teddy and why you had confidence in him. After all, he was in a rush to get to a meeting, ran into your car, promised to pay you for the damages and paid you. So you knew that Teddy was a person who you could trust and you could rely upon. Then you told us the story of the Walmart situation. Wow, what a, what a really, really good story that was. I loved the fact that you talked about the person who came up to you and said to you, Google is a liar. I thought that was terrific. And I've often wanted to say that myself because I think it oftentimes. Google is a liar. And then the other person came up to you, but you weren't convinced and you weren't going to go with that black wire to the uh, battery of the car. And that was because you honestly believed that was the wrong thing to do and it would cause more damage than it would cause help. You came up with a conclusion to the speech tonight. Everything followed from the beginning, the wisdom from Uncle Teddy, all the way to accepting yourself as you are and living with yourself as you are. Very, very well done. A couple of things that I might mention, my time is about up, but I did want to mention, I think you could be a little more emphatic when you use the words of other people, like Google is a liar. And the other person who came up to you and said, don't listen to Google. I'm telling you, it's my, my people know it's the right thing to do. You might have been a little more emphatic about those gestures. Nevertheless, this was a wonderful, gigantic step forward for you. Congratulations, Steve, Stefan. Thank you, John. Our next evaluator up will be Jim Sims, and Jim Sims will be evaluating Brenda Adams's speech. Well, I think there's so much that we are missing and so many things that we have to adapt to in these ages of COVID-19. For me, I miss baseball. And uh, Derek Jeter was somebody who was always performing the clutch in the playoffs. Brenda, I would say you're the Derek Jeter of storytelling. I think it's something that you do very naturally. And uh, you always unveil the finish. And you, you tell a story as if we were sitting around your kitchen table. You're touching story. You said, I'm not a farmer, was the title of your, your story. 
but I almost think that it could have been that you are a farmer and that we're all farmers. The objective of the speech, the assignment four, is to become skilled in arousing emotions while telling a story. One of the evaluation questions in the guide is, what emotions did you experience as the speaker told the story? How did the speaker use descriptive words and phrases to emo evoke emotion? That letter from the senior, that was just fabulous. That was, I mean, a goosebump moment. I counted at least three goosebump moments in your speech where you, you kind of get that feeling like, wow, she really touched me. You use very descriptive language like the bluest of eyes on the math teacher and, and a swimming pool devoid of water. How did the speaker use dialogue to evoke emotion? You slowed down and you took on a different voice when you led us into that little missive that the senior had shared with you. And your emotion was obvious several times in that exchange. And I think that's when we're almost the most powerful, as long as we don't drive ourselves to tears. But that was a really well done touch. I'm not sure I totally understood where the little girl was in the math teacher and then how the little girl became the farmer and the teacher. That was maybe just my listening skills. I, I liked that the senior had his own voice. And was it a male or was it a female? I thought it was a male, but I might have mis been mistaken. It could have just as easily, I guess, been a female writing that. And farmers are teachers that are planting crops that they've never planted before, just like teachers. And you engage the farmer at the end, which was it's an interesting technique because you talked about a farmer in the beginning, never talked about a farmer again until you talked about how you plant seeds that might not grow for four years. I love your smile. Your smile is consistent throughout your speech. You could gesture a little bit higher. In the beginning, you gestured a little low, but you corrected that even just a third into your speech. So that's an important touch that we need to use. I thought that... Um, one opportunity for change might have been you talked about lower students. You might want to use a different description for those that are not the, the A students. But I, I love that, that powerful climax. You even exhaled before you shared it with us. So I thought that it was a great analogy between farmers and teachers. And I am sure that you are planting many crops. Your farm is rich with crops of all different types. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for that evaluation, Jim. Next evaluator of tonight is Tom, who will be, evalu will be evaluating Woodrow's speech. Thank you. Woodrow. Now, Woodrow's speech was about executing a plan. So I'd like to listen to the speech. I'd like to listen to the intro and see if it grabs me. And Woodrow started out with a trainer, a coach, a speaker. They just use canned speeches and it really doesn't motivate. You need a plan. And right then I'm thinking, okay, what is this about? Where is Woodrow going with this? Well, Woodrow started off with the problem, right? He didn't just want to give a canned speech. You needed a plan. And the problem was in this time of COVID, we don't have the one-on-one. -on -one. We don't get to see in his realm basketball players in high school and this is a big time for them because they're playing they're playing hard but nobody's looking at them so what can you do how can Woodrow go and motivate these people and so he had a plan and the plan started with motivating them motivating the high school uh, the high school boys and girls right and he had the steps in the plan, which I liked, and it sort of kept on drawing me in. I found myself listening and just saying, yeah, that works, that works. So Woodrow had his steps. Obviously, he spent his time, he understood exactly what the problem was. He put together a plan and he executed the plan 
And in a moment, I'll get to the end to tell you what I thought about the plan. So with this plan, Woodrow explained how you have to look to the future. You know, here we are today, here's the problem, get them hyped, but look, you have time, use that time. And that would help them get set up for the future. Now, Woodrow is a sharp looking guy right there, right? Background was perfect. I like how you changed the background from the white to the brown. It sort of had you stand out. You, you address the kill and you deliver the speech. I couldn't find any flaws, any ahs, ums, or so's. It was very pleasing. Uh, when the only thing I could say that really, and from listening to many, many, many speeches, was one thing that's said over and over again, uh, and something, as the, uh, something that you should remember. When you get to the end of the speech, don't thank the audience. We thank you for getting up there and speaking. And that's really the only thing I could see that stood out that maybe you could think about in the future as you go on. The thing I like the most is that the plan had a solution. At the end, you tell them, look, think to the future and use this time wisely, come up with things that you can, you, you have captivated audience. I felt satisfied that the plan would work. I thought overall your plan was executed perfectly and I am waiting for the next one that could help me. Very good, Woodrow.